everybody, what's up? It is Friday, January 22nd, TGIF. Uh, NASDAQ up today, the other market average is mostly down, but Dow had a good week, we closed up. Bitcoin took a little bit of a dive today, but uh, had a rebound midday. I think it closed around 32,000, something like that. All right, what are we talking about here? Look, folks, let me go over the fiscal flows a little bit. Now, total spending so far this fiscal year, $2 trillion up $495 billion over the same time last year. Almost half a trillion already. We're not even... What are we like? Uh, we're not even a third of the way into the fiscal year, up a half a trillion. That's pretty good. And, you know, more of those fiscal flows are going to start to become evident. You know, as there's still that COVID 19 relief bill that was signed under Trump. We're not having the full impact of, of that. And, and the Biden plan, I mean, that still has to get passed. So it's looking pretty good. One thing I got to say that it just makes me laugh because, you know, I talk all the time about lack of mental game, lack of patience, and that isn't something solely, you know, that you see with individuals, investors, and people who are not that savvy. I mean, you see that on Wall Street. You see that with the so-called pros all the time. You know, for them, if something doesn't happen like next week, then all of a sudden that paradigm is gone. That, that whole macro outlook is gone. And I saw um, a thing today from uh, Rabobank. Was that like a Dutch bank or something? I don't know. Saying the reflation trade has already come under question. I mean, eh, you know, they're talking you know, because, hey, it didn't happen like in two weeks. Right? Like treasuries are rallying a little bit now. Like gold has come down. Like they're saying, you know what? You need to have constant stimulus, constant stimulus. Meanwhile, we're up, we're growing, spending is growing at 33% year over year. That's like, you know, that's a blinding rate of spending, blinding speed. And, you know, the, the deficit's at 740 billion. All right, already again, we're not even, you know, a third of the way into the fiscal year. I mean, the transfers, the net transfers that are going on right now, even if it's stopped at this level, I mean, you might have a correction in the stock market and, and the whole reflation trade if it's stopped at this level, but it's not the end of it. But it cracks me up how, and again, you know, I, what I just mentioned was the fact that there's a lot more yet to come. Another thing that was funny in that Rabobank piece was that they're saying, you know, in wars, what happens is after wars, there's a fiscal contraction. I mean, first of all, yeah, you might equate the COVID situation to a war. I don't think there's anything wrong with, with making that comparison in the sense of, you know, uh, government mobilization and stuff like that, although it's, it's probably a fraction of anything if it was a serious war. But nobody's talking about fiscal contraction. I mean, they're already two, three, four steps ahead. This is what I talk about. It doesn't make any sense to guess what policy is going to be when they tell you what they are going to do. I mean, what's the point right now in, you know, speculating on when the fiscal pump is going to be turned back a little bit. Number one, they're not talking about that. Number two, they're talking about the exact opposite, that fiscal spigot, the flow, is just going to increase. And number three, you know, when it happens, we'll be able to see it. I mean, I see the numbers every single day in the daily treasury statement. So this is another classic example of investor short-termism. You know, it's like they don't see it happening right away. It was like the same thing with the dollar, okay? The dollar was going down, down, down from 2017 into, you know, uh, early 2018. And then it started to go up and it's like, ah, that's it. That's it. It's over. You, you know, that's the only currency in the world. Everyone's got to have it. There's no alternative dollar. You know, they don't see the big picture, which frankly, I'm happy about that. I mean, 
you know, they, I've said this so many times, they, they literally come over and put money into your pocket if you know how to read them and if you have the right mental game. So don't think it's a condition uh, that is unique to, you know, uh, unsavvy individual investors because it's not. It goes right up to the very top of Wall Street, this short-termism. And that's why you see, you know, that's why we've had the advent of these algo traders and stuff like that. I mean, they need to make their little, you know, pennies like now, 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 now. And you get a guy like Warren Buffett kicking back over decades. There's not one algo trading shop anywhere near the wealth that Warren Buffett has accumulated. And you don't have to embrace his style, uh, but you can have a scaled down version of his style. Works too. So anyway, that's where we're at. Let me just make a comment about the, uh, the EIA report was out today for oil. A nice uh, increase in gasoline demand. It was the second week in a row. I, I think the, uh, right now, actually, gasoline inventories are about 6% below last year. You know, the last time we saw a year-over-year -year differential, that negative, uh, gasoline prices were almost about 30% higher. However, we saw a big increase in gasoline production in, in the recent week. Inventories were mixed. We had a build in crude. We had a, a drawdown in gas and uh, a small increase in distillate. One thing, though, uh, crude exports are weak. Man, they're really weak. Uh, but product exports are strong, so I would say the whole thing was kind of neutral, maybe slightly bullish. We'll see what happens, but uh, right now, you know, a lot is going to depend on short-term movements in the stock market. These, these traders in petroleum, they like to look at that. But uh, it looks supported. It looks supported. All right, that's it. Remember, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial of MMT Trader. Don't forget to listen to my podcast. The link is right here in the description below. And don't forget to like and subscribe on this channel. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you on Monday. Bye-bye.